<clears throat> I heard someone the other day interpreting the results of bhakti, of spiritual surrender to God, as being that one becomes sweet molasses. <laughs> I must say this is a misinterpretation. <laughs> Sweetness there is, but it comes with what I would call a fierce equanimity. And I think we must never underestimate the fierceness that is part of the achieving of liberation. Came to mind this morning as I was reading that Korea is in the news again for its fierceness. That the Korean uh, Zen tradition has been one of the most powerful in the world. Its lineage for hundreds of years. And there's a great Zen story uh, that took place I think probably a couple of centuries ago, there was a very bloody rebellion in northern Korea. And uh, the rebel army had entered this village. And everyone fled because they knew they'd be massacred. The town was a ghost town in a very short time. And the rebel army was checking through all of the buildings. But they found that in the Zen temple, sitting in meditation, was the abbot of the Zen monastery. And uh, the rebel general was told about this, and he went to the temple. And the Zen master didn't even have the courtesy to get up out of his meditation seat, you know, when this general arrived. And the general went up to him and faced him and said, Don't you know you're looking at a man who can run you through with a sword without batting an eye? And the Zen master said, Do you know you're looking at a man who can be run through with a sword without batting an eye. <laughs> and the general laughed, and he bowed, and he left him alone. And so we have to have that kind of fierceness that is so strong that it does not need to be violent. But it's certainly not weakness, and it's certainly not fear. One is liberated from all of that. And in a sense, that has to be our constant practice. We're practicing to face all the adversities that can come at us in this phenomenal world, as well as the ultimate challenge of facing death. And if we can do that with fierce equanimity, and we have graduated from the course that's being offered on this planet, and we will able to enroll in graduate school. Another Zen master named Hakuin was very famous for saying, you know, this sitting meditation then you, that you do is just preliminary practice. This isn't the real thing. The real thing is meditating when you're out there in the world of action, when you have to face uh, the stresses, the difficulties, the impossible people, can you remain centered? Can you keep your mind in silence and solitude and peace? That's the real practice. And, uh, and so although he encouraged people to do the sitting meditation, because without that you wouldn't be able to go out in the world, but he kept that very clear. This is just the preliminary. This is the ideal conditions. If you can't even sit in silence when nobody's attacking you, how are you going to do it when they are? And to be able to do that, you have to first stop attacking yourself. And most of us have a mind that is split into an attacker and a victim. And when we are completely, fiercely equanimous and do not yield to the threats, the imprecations, the attacks, the guilt tripping, all of those things that come from our own superego, from our own unconscious, we dissolve it by refusing to ratify it. We draw the, the life out of that puppet mind that wants to attack out of its own fear, out of its own lack of grounding in the absolute presence. It wants to make us feel bad about ourselves. And the only way out of that is to not be a self, not an ego self, but to be the emptiness, the supreme presence that is unaffected. Unaffected by either fear or desire, good or bad, pain or enjoyment. 
And that's what our practice is. In fact, Hakuin uh, once said, all right, let's have a final uh, Zen intensive. I'm going to die in three days. So you've got that much time to get enlightened. Indeed, he did die three days later. And he wrote his final Zen calligraphy poem. And it had the, the Japanese uh, character for midst. And then under it, he wrote in, in uh, it was written in huge letters. And then underneath, it said, uh, to be able to meditate in the midst of action is infinitely more important than to meditate while sitting here in silence. And again, it was a very powerful message because he fulfilled his own vow to die in three days. Again, with that fierce uh, lack of any kind of self-pity. He wasn't even sick at the time, but it was his time to go and he chose to die consciously. So most of us are afraid of those things in life, death, pain, other challenges. But to a yogi or a Zen master, these are the challenges that bring the growth. These are the greatest blessings. Our enemies are our greatest friends because they give us the opportunity to practice that equanimity and compassion and love, forgiveness and self-empowerment in the realization of the unity of all that is and to let go of the ego mind that wants either to be in pain or to be in a state of inadequacy or guilt or attacking or any kind of a, a peaceless self-justification or self-reproach. Those are all false relationships to the real. And so we must be grounded in pure being. That's what sat means, the supreme being that is within us and that is the essence of what we are. And we must claim that power. It won't be given to you. It's not something that some guru will hit you with a, a peacock feather and then suddenly you'll have it, you know. It's not something that a, a, a mantra will give you. It is something you must claim and then with your own power of will to assume it in your life. It is our birthright but it can only be done when we are in a state of honesty, truthfulness with ourselves. So tonight, as we meditate, let us focus on remaining in that stillness that will not be interrupted even if somebody with a sword comes in. Okay? Or even if our own mind creates a voice that attacks us in a way that can sting worse than a sword. To be still, to not react, and to dissolve whatever fear, whatever anger, whatever other emotion is there with the pureness of our being, which is love. So when we start the meditation, let us be in a state of relaxation, calmness, let the muscles relax, follow your breathing. If you wish, use a mantra. It can be the word I am or God or Buddha nature, emptiness, peace. But get to the point where you don't require a word or a phrase and you're in the mind of silent presence and affirm silently that you are this and that this mind of fierce equanimity is what you are and that you'll never lose it. <laughs>